game resumed. Alright guys, and welcome back to CSL March Madness. We are hopping into the 2v2 between Cal Poly and Georgia Tech spawning here in the bottom right. Is going to be the 2v2 team of Cal Poly, incorrigible our Teal Zerg, and his teammate Spiffy, the Blue Terran. Spawning over here in the left side of the map is going to be the 2v2 team of Georgia Tech with the Purple Terran remix and his partner, the Red Zerg Rain. So we do have a TZ versus TZ once again, Ferg. And you know, the 2v2 that we saw last time got off to a pretty good start and then all of a sudden. Hellions in the main base, roasting SUVs, and this time around, we know we could see very similar openers. Lane Hellions, such a strong start with this uh, with this two v two composition. Berg, sorry, you here with me, there. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, you know, I had I'm a saying, strong feeling. That's what happened. I was saying to my empty office here. Uh, that the last TZ versus TZ we saw earlier today, uh, it seemed like uh, the team here at the bottom right was ahead uh, with their control with the early trades, but the other team just had better macro and had more units, and they totally won. So 2v2 can be a very fickle beast here, especially on this map. It's hard to hold this one ramp. It's so far from your production facilities and uh, from your mains, it's it's pretty hard to wall off this entire ramp too, so you definitely have to have a prepared plan for doing so. And uh, TZ, it's hard to get a solid ramp up as well. So Incorrigible looks like he's going to be doing an early expand right now. Rain is going for, it's already got three gas. Uh, spawning pool on the way, probably going to be an early zergling speed. Uh, but of course those follow-up roaches off of one base can be very, very powerful. So Spiffy Incorrigible going to have to weather the storm as they get their more economic build set up. Yeah, actually a hatch first on this map, definitely a little bit uh, ballsy, I do want to say. Um, you know, with that, that speed coming up first for uh, Rain, and there it does go down. Um, you know, they are going to have to play very, very fast. Spiffy is going to want to get a bunker down on the low ground to just kind of help out his buddy here, get this hatchery up first. Uh, meanwhile, we do see Georgia Tech's Terran remix getting a relatively quick factory here, so... He's going to be able to get some Hellions out on the field. This is looking like a very standard reactor Hellion build. So, uh, you know, Speedling Hellions for Georgia Tech. Meanwhile, a little bit more economically focused on the uh, Cal Poly side. Yeah, you're going to see Spiffy setting up a bunker here. A very nice placement. It's going to be able to reach the ramp and uh, be able to wall off a little bit easier and reinforce to a little bit easier as well. It looks like Incorrigible already setting up a spine crawler. He's going to want to spread the creep. Uh, and get some help there at the wall, but uh, at the same time, actually, Rain is expanding as well, um, though he does not have to macro off of it. You can see he's already got speed going down. It could just be a macro hatch to continue pumping lings and units mm -hmm. off of. Uh, we'll see if he throws down a Roach Warren soon. It should be actually already down if he's going for it, so I think he's just going to go with lings uh, and maybe feed some minerals to his good old buddy. He's already getting the starport and starting to pump out uh, double Hellions, which is nice in 2v2. And Georgia Tech definitely going to be a little bit more aggressive right now. Uh, 12 Lings on the way. Speed is done. Yeah, so looking pretty solid, um, you know, both teams right now. I mean, obviously, if Spiffy and uh, Corrigible can kind of hold on here, they will have the slight lead, but, you know, they have not weathered the worst of it yet. Starport now finishing up for Remix. Um, so he's not just going to be doing just, you know, some Hellions up in the front. He will be dropping some in the back as well. Actually, Tech Lab, so it's going to be Hellion Banshee instead. Pretty scary stuff. <laughs> yeah, and that, that bunker is, is paying for itself though right now. We're just keeping these Lings out of the base, making sure they don't get too close or get any scouting information. But Incorrigible losing an Overlord there at the bottom left corner of the map. Though it does see the Hellion, it does see a lot of Marines on the way. Uh, oh no, Spiffy is moving out with his army, his entire army. If they get caught, if Rain flanks them right now, I mean, he'll lose all of his <laughs> Marines. Oh god, um, here and goes that's exactly Marines. what's happening. Oh and no. Rain. That is just brutal right there. So now Six Marines for almost nothing. Uh, and you can see these Lings stuff. are now going to be looking to charge up. And uh, they can just run by that bunker if they want to. Yep, and they're going to run into the natural and do a lot of damage. These 
Hellions are they through an addition. Here. Yeah, they gotta know what's their attack. They're attacking the Oracle Command, which I don't like. It can just lift off. Nothing there can attack upwards. Um, but they are doing a lot of damage to these lanes. Marines doing okay. The Hellion control is a little bit wonky. Um, they should be going for uh, this Zerg base right now. And they're not. They're going to continue losing units, though. Trading Zerglings at cost is not too great. Uh, though the Hellions are doing a lot of damage to these SCVs, uh, they took a lot from the Marines on the high ground, and now these Lings are going to clean up everything. Wow. Uh, wow. Spiffy. Spiffy and Gorge will hold that very well. What just what happened? What a hold. Like, what a hold. Uh, honestly, it was a combination of a couple of things. It was indecisiveness. Hold on. Before we talk about it, Banshee in the main base of Spiffy oh, no. and doing a lot of damage Spiff. right now. A little Spiff bit kills, of delayed Spiff response kills. here. Banshee is going to get a decent amount of kills, but nothing too crazy. More reinforcements coming out for Cal Poly. They know they need to do some damage here. I mean, no expansion is down. Oh, actually, expansion is down for Remix, but not saturated yet. Meanwhile, these two guys, uh, Cal Poly, have their expansions up and running fully, basically. So, um, yeah, going back to that attack just for a minute before they, you know, put on a little more pressure here. Uh, they were so indecisive, they didn't know exactly what to attack, and going after that orbital command was an absolute mistake. They could have actually surrounded that bunker out in the front and just killed it outright immediately. Yeah. Those are six marines dead, uh, hellions roasting everything, and then they could have swung into the main base of the zerg uh, with only one spine crawl in there. That's just not enough to deal with these units, but they kind of darted in and around the base. They attacked the command center, they darted up the Terrence ramp. And they just got whittled down, and now, you know, Cal Poly has a slight lead. So, you know, just looking more into the game, third base coming down for rain. So they are macroing up behind this. Second base of uh, Remix is now being taken. So Georgia Tech not going to fully commit to this attack. They are going to just do a soft contain. Uh, Banshee is now coming back in, and the Banshee didn't actually go down. First one has eight kills right now, so that is pretty solid. Uh, okay. And, of course... Rain is getting solid scouting information on everything right now. He sees the gas coming down on that natural expansion. Uh, so, I mean, Georgia Tech definitely botched the attack just a bit, but in terms of overall state of game, you know, not too bad. Actually, incorrigible at 34 drones to the 46 of Rain. How did I miss that? Yeah, incorrigible just hasn't been building too many drones, unfortunately. Uh, now starting yeah. to catch up in production nine actually um but you know what rain if he gets this uh, hatchery set up here in this fifth pocket position could be very very good in the long run uh is this this is gonna be a hard hard uh, attack to do is is uh cal poly going to be pushing out right now lots of marines and uh, medevacs here but looks like they don't want to charge into all those hellions i mean hellions do okay against Marines, but if you bunch them up, they can take a lot. And if they're not attacking the Hellions, if they're attacking Zerglings, uh, they can you can lose your whole army pretty quickly and uh, not very efficiently. Yeah, so I mean, some good uh, map presence coming out here from Georgia Tech. Look at those links just doing a little bit of dancing on the edges of the map. Um, you know, just trying to keep tabs as good as possible. Uh, or as strong as possible, and he actually should catch those dropships from Spiffy. Uh, and they do remix, just gonna bring over a bunch of Hellions, just to sort of intimidate this drop. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna drop on him? Uh, now uh, he's <laughs> dropping on a pair of rocks. Totally, totally. Yeah, just, just dropping in this little patient. island area. And the mutas are coming out, they're gonna be able to clean up uh, if this drop ever does get back on his feet. Uh, actually, he can never get out of here without taking down the rocks, so he's just gonna do the, just that. Uh, Spiffy in a bit of a tight spot. Um, scouting that front, seeing there is a siege tank. But I really, really like what Georgia Tech is doing. Oh no, Marine's gonna hit some of these mutilists. No need to run the mutilists in there. Um, they're probably trying to catch the Marines in the medevacs, but oh, don't lose, don't lose Muta without any chance of killing uh, that drop. But right now, the Georgia Tech team, they just have so much so much across the map. And uh, poor, poor Cal Poly is kind of stuck in their base. Oh, man. Wow. They took out a drop ship. Yeah, it was actually well played there by these mutilists. I mean, oh, I hear a Hunter Seeker. It got outranged. Okay. Sad. Oh, 
Oh, oh these man. Marines are gonna clean up pretty brutally oh. here. Now Georgia Tech taking what I feel like is a pretty solid advantage at this point. Three base uh, getting fully established here for Rain. Meanwhile, Incorrigible stuck on that two base. Let's look at the Mutalist look count. We have about even. Incorrigible has so many Mutas right now. He has 18 Mutalists to uh, 17. Actually, yeah, so not too even. big of a lead. But yeah. it's all going to be about how you control it right now. There's not too much anti-air on that Remix has for Georgia Tech. If he can bait uh, the Georgia Tech Mutos into Spiffy's Marine Army, could get a nice old lead. Lots of lings getting lost there in that engagement Spiffy setting up. Um, but they need to start looking at taking a fifth. This uh, Rain's fifth base could be getting a lot more gas right now. No gas mining there. This Mutalist count is just so important right now. There's just so much riding on these Mutalist balls. And, you know, I really want Remix to throw down an armory because... Uh, I want him to get that Hellbat research for, for nothing else just to see Hellbats in an actual game because I just don't feel like we see them often enough. They are really good against, you know, units in general. They're pretty yeah. solid. <laughs> they, have, they have plus so, armor. Like, that's it. It's it's a just good, all man. gas it's so unit. Much, it just gives so you a lot damage. of armor and DPS. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen them enough to actually justify what I said, but I mean, from what I have seen from Hellbats, they do have pretty legitimate potential. Uh, they are just so immobile, but here we go. Marine Mutalist Tank Ball moving out for uh, Cal Poly. Oh, oh my God. one of those. So much damage. There goes and... the Hunter Seekers, and they are on some of those Mutalists, but they do, in fact, get outranged once again. Uh, that was a, another scary moment. Uh, and it looks like these two teams are posturing up here. We have, you know, a Mecking Terran with a Mutaling Zerg with a, <coughs> a Biotank Terran and a Muta Zerg, so... Very similar, you know, compositions, but if these two were to clash, I feel like uh, with proper control, the superior marine count would be better in this case. And right now, Rain is trying to run around, and he's going to totally flank that entire base, and he's going to attack this uh, this hatchery very easy. Should be able to take it out. No problemo. Muta's trying to get in here to defend, but not soon enough to take out the hatchery, and just going to delay that mining. He's going to be so, so good. And the Mutas now of Rain are trying to get in here. Uh, not going to do too much damage. Got to be very, very careful. But you know what? If he can poke away at the tank lines, it, that'll, that'd will be enough right there. And I really like the Widow Mine spread of, of Remix. So just to kind of catch back up on that Mutalist count, now we have taking the lead by a huge margin at 41 to the 27 of Incorrigible. That block. It's like the Wings of Doom. It is just so massive. He's actually going to catch the Mutalist right here. He does back off. You want to be very careful. He knows that Widow Mines, even though they haven't really been shown uh, by Spiffy, are still a possibility, and Mutalists are starting to go down here. Big stim up from Spiffy. Scan's going down. This is just so intense right now. Hellion's getting yeah. some shots off. Under Seekers are going to go down on that Viking in one Marine, and they do both get outranged. <laughs> but, man, even if one of those connect, that's a game Nice under. control. Nice control from all four players right now. Uh, especially as incorrigible and spiffy try to get additional bases set up uh, one thing is that Georgia Tech has not tried to take an additional base after that fit um, but right now the Mutaflock is coming around if they can pick off these engineering bays take out a base or something some production facilities I mean these Mutas have almost no opposition right now and yep he's gonna target down a lot of units right now but the Mutas Four incorrigible have come to defend, and he really did only took out a couple SCVs. Um, yeah, but I mean, oh, he gets out his mutalist, so no damage taken. But oh, but all those mutalists are just going down. This engagement is crazy. This engagement is crazy. Oh, but the mutas. So Marine many mutas. Help! I can't. Wow. My eyes do not understand. <laughs> There's just so much damage going down at once. We do see some Thors actually coming out for Remix, and that is just such a smart thing to mix them at this point. Get that bulk out on the field, control those Mutalists. The uh, Siege where tanks they of Smithy right. are totally undefended right now. There's nothing at all around these Siege tanks. The Mutas are coming close. They're There's like... one Marine, man. Look at that one Marine. He's ready. Yeah. He has two, too. Being a boss. He's ready to throw it down. These two mer or these two balls of Mutalists are just sort of uh, floating around, and we do see Remix's Widow Mind actually getting a hit off on those Mutas. So the other Widow Minds. Oh no! But Spiffy's all of the Spiffy's oh, tanks got totally undefended. Oh, but Widow oh, Mind's oh. going down. This is nuts. Mutas are doing so much damage though. 
Ling's doing a great job of tanking, and wow, Georgia Tech has Cal Poly Pomona on the run. Another Widowmine Blast doing a lot of damage to those Marines. You can't let the Marine count fall because these Mutas are not enough to win the day. Oh no, trying to reburrow these Widow Mines, and it's not going to be enough. And uh, the Widow Mines right now of rain are raining terror, true to their name, down upon poor Spiffy, but Incorrigible has a lot of Banelings here as well. Uh, could do a lot of damage completely out of nowhere. Oh my gosh, Banelings blowing up on a Thor and a couple tanks actually, so not too well won right there. And Remix and Rain are on the edge of breaking through this base. Um, yeah, they could I mean, go just... take the pocket expansion, but they might just be able to win with this huge wave of Ling reinforcements coming. Uh, Siffy is going to have to hold against these siege tanks. And I don't think he's going to be able to. The siege tanks going to do a lot of damage while Lings get in here and clean up. Of course, Siffy. Look at that production tab. We may see Hellbats yet. <laughs> They're finally coming into the game. Hellbat two. A borderline irrelevant at this point because I mean. This is just so much damage done by Georgia Tech. They are looking to get this 3-0 and move on to the round of four here. A dominating performance in this 2v2 and a dominating performance um, in this Today. match overall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, this uh, is going to be a 3-0, and it looks like there it is. Incorrigible losing wow. his last face. And uh, solid, solid control. I mean, it's very easy in a 2v2 when all four armies are engaging to make a slight misstep uh, because there's so much more to account for. But... Both teams there did a very good job, and in the end, it comes down to who controls better, and Georgia Tech is going to take it 3-0, and uh, they're going to be moving on to the round of four. Of course, we will be casting that next week. Stay tuned tomorrow uh, for more round of eight action here at the CSL. Uh, it's March Madness, and we will be doing a special broadcast on Thursday, the round of 16. Of course, shout-outs to our sponsors, NCIX and Raid Call. Any last thoughts, Chris? I have to say, awesome games here today. It was great to see an ace match, finally. And, um, you know, I have to also mention that Georgia Tech, I mean, we've been talking a lot about UC Berkeley, and, you know, they did make it to, um, you know, the playoffs already, and we've been talking about University of Washington. But Georgia Tech, we haven't really been hyping up as much, and they are just looking so strong and so scary. Yeah, and of course, we will be giving away an Amazon gift card in uh, the Raid Call chat, so join it right now. It's group 1111, and I believe we'll also be uh, doing some interviews, so stay tuned for that. And, uh, uh, I think are... that's about it for the broadcast, though, so this is Alpha First. Okay, so we will be streaming the interview. Uh, this is Alpha Ferg. Uh, you can find me at twitter.com slash Alpha Ferg. Chris. And I am at Sneko SC, so you can find me there. And I also have a YouTube channel under the same name, so you can find me there as well. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so we will be back with a uh, little post-game interview.